Let me start off by saying, even I'm bamboozled. I started researching this man, and three minutes in, I realised he was a whole protagonist. Nay, a whole damn Power Ranger. Keep in mind, everything that I'm about to mention is from his enemies, and was published in European media, and it still paints him out as the most giga-chad individual. So... Introducing the Nightmare of the Caucasus, the Lion of Dagestan, a man hailed in London times as the greatest chieftain to ever live, Iman Shabir! <laughs> So, we all know Khabib, right? Alhamdulillah, tomorrow night I'm gonna smash your boy, guys. I'm gonna smash your boy. Absolute unit of a man. Beat the crap out of Conor McGregor. Well, turns out, running fades is genetic. Because his great-grandfather, Noor Muhammad was a deputy of Imam Shamil. And Imam Shamil makes Khabib look like your average schmuck. Let's start off with Imam Shamil's birth. First of all, he was named Ali. So already starting off strong. But then he caught some crazy disease and nearly died. So as per the local custom they had in the Caucasus, his name was changed. They now call him Shamil, meaning the one who is complete. As a child, he had absolutely zero hands. Ah, yeah, ah, ah, take this, this. In some early ah, Dragon Ball Z Gohan type vibe, spending all his time in the masjid reading and writing. He was however extremely smart, mastering Quran and Islamic sciences by the time he was 10. Don't get it wrong, he still had that dog in him. One time his dad was drinking, so this young 10 year old boy took a knife, held it to his own throat and said, Every time I see you drinking, I get the urge to cut my own jugular. Yeah, his dad never drank again after that. But anyway, because he was doing so well at his studies, some of his fellow students, who were let's just say, mentally challenged, got jealous. That channel thinking he's so smart with his reading and his writing. Well, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. I say, we show him how we do things. And so they jumped him outside the masjid, beating him senseless. They even stabbed him. What kind of 10 year olds were these? Yeah, but these kids had no idea what they had just created. Imam Shamil, as a 10 year old, bleeding out on the street, crawled into the forest. Why into the forest, you may ask? Well. It's because he thought going back to his parents injured wasn't manly. He's bleeding out on the floor and had the time to think, damn, I can't let my mum and dad see me taking L's. And so he crawled into the forest and healed himself with berries and herbs and just started training. Just doing push-ups and sit-ups in the forest, fighting bears like Baki. Yeah, so by the time he returned, he was the greatest warrior his people had ever laid eyes on. No one could match him with a sword, a gun, a horse, or just straight fisticuffs. This man would train by putting a bullet on his tongue and then running a marathon. If the bullet fell off of his tongue, he'd start again. His preferred fighting style was dual wielding. But not just dual wielding the same weapon, that's for schmucks. In one hand a sword, and in the other hand a blicky. There's one story that he was just posted up on a horse in the battlefield. Gun in his right hand, sword in the left, and he had the reins of the horse in his mouth and he was just tearing up the battlefield. Yeah, by the end of his training arc, he was 6 foot 3 and built like a titanium fridge. This was when the Russians decided to invade the Caucasus. And unfortunately, none of the Muslim countries stepped in to help them. Sounds familiar? Naturally, Imam Shamil and his boy, Mullah Ghazi, said, screw it, let's just make our own country. And they established the Caucasian Emirate. They went to all the different tribes in the mountains and said, join us or run this fade. And so they united under the Sharia. For the next few years, 
Imam Shamil and Mullah Ghazi would just piss off the Russians to such an extent that in the year 1832, the Russians said, screw this, massacre the entire city. And so, in a surprise attack, they attack the capital of the Caucasian Emirates, Ghimri Dagestan. They killed everyone in the city. Mullah Ghazi, the leader of the emirate, was also killed. He did, however, go out like an absolute G. They say that he was shot multiple times, took out the people who he was fighting, and then went to the prayer mat and made dua to Allah. When they found his body the next day, he still had his hand in his beard and his finger pointed towards the sky. Absolute chad. What was Imam Shamil doing? You, you'll see. After they had invaded the city and killed everyone, the Russians came back at night and just started looting bodies, thieving from the homes of the people they'd just killed. <gasps> hey fool, those muzzies never stood a chance, you know what I'm saying? Unib, what are you doing? Huh? Oh, he's, so my character, his name is Carlos Vukasavio Mokovic. Why is he Mexican? Oh God, you called me, I came here, I did the role. This is the character, okay? He is the Sombrarian Soviet. Oh, Soviet Union doesn't exist yet? Well, whatever, man, just, just deal with it, just deal with yeah, it. Where's well, my manager, you... man? I gotta fight back home. A forum like a tortilla, vato. And while they were looting, they heard something move. And there was Imam Shamil standing in the doorway, six foot three, cast in shadows like Darth Vader. Now I need to preface, what I'm about to mention was written by the Russians and published in European newspapers. But even I'm completely bamboozled. The report is as following. You dare come into my land and desecrate my people? Now catch these hands. Imam Shamil leapt over the soldiers with one swing of his sword, took out three of the men. One of them managed to dodge and then stabbed Imam Shamil in the chest with a bayonet. I got you in your lung. You're a dead fool. And he thought the fight was over until Imam Shamil said, Over? Who decided that? And he pulled the knife out of his own chest. Oh, I'm dead. Grabbed the man by the neck on some Broly from Dragon Ball Z type of beat and snapped his neck. Then, then, when the other Russian soldiers came in for backup, they say Imam Shamil did a backflip over the city walls and disappeared into the night like Batman. Yeah, so we're just gonna officially change his name from Imam Shamil to Himam Shamil because I don't care who you are and what you've done, you are not him. Imam Shamil is him. After getting stabbed in the chest and disappearing into the night, Imam Shamil took some time to recover, by which I assume he just told the wound to close itself up and it did so out of fear. He would then become the leader of the resistance. Well, I guess I'm in charge now. And the moment he became leader, he said, everyone's gonna follow Islam. Girl, we're going to Islam. And so he made very strict rules. One of his rules was, no more drinking. You see, at the time in the Caucasus, instead of following Sharia, they started following something called Adat, meaning our own customs. Mike, you gotta stop with this jaywalking! You're missing with that gay shit! What gay shit the law?! And they just made it okay to drink, gamble, whatever other haram nonsense there is, I don't know, I'm a good child, and they just ran with it. Imam Shamil said, that's not gonna run anymore. Anybody caught drinking, whipped 70 times. However, one man who knew Imam Shamil since he was a youth came up and said, How are you going to tell us to stop drinking when you used to drink yourself? Yeah, the man was chatting complete cap, but all the soldiers bought it. That makes sense! And so Imam Shamil, to recover the trust that his soldiers had, said, Bet belled his brother, got him to come onto the stage, and had his own brother execute the punishment of 70 lashes on him. All the while, Imam Shamil didn't flinch. This man is Zorro. In a similar situation, while they were under siege from the Russians, murmurs of surrender were travelling their way through Imam Shamil's camp, and he didn't like that one bit. So he said, anybody who I even catch 
saying the word surrender will be whipped 100 times. A few days later, his soldiers found a woman who they said was the beginning of this notion of surrender. Imam Shamil turned to look at her to see the face of the woman who had been so cowardly. It was his mother. The soldiers were like, I give the punishment then. Imam Shamil just said, I. They brought his mother up and prepared her to receive the lashes. He gave the whip to the executioner. The executioner lifted the whip into the air and brought it cracking down. Except Imam Shamil jumped in the way. The executioner stopped and Imam Shamil grabbed him by the collar and looked him dead in the eyes and said, I swear by Allah. I promise you, Wallahi, I swear to God, I'm serious. If you do not whip me like you whip every other criminal, they gonna have to kill me anyway because I will take your head. And so Imam Shamil took the pain without flinching for his mum. This man was every anime protagonist known to man. I would not be surprised if this man pulled out a bankai. Also, he was Naruto because he just had the craziest charisma. The Russians once went into a city that Imam Shamil had been at, and he must have given the most awe-inspiring Captain Irwin-type speech ever. Because when the Russians went in, they found not only the men, but the women and children as young as nine years old who had sworn to fight till death. The Russian soldiers were beaten back by old Russian women with pots and pans. Yeah, Imam Shamil was just something else. Later on, one of Imam Shamil's sons, Jamaluddin, was deceived and captured by the Russians. The Russians were gassed. They belled up Imam Shamil and said, Hey yo, if you want your son back, hand yourself in. What did Imam Shamil do? He said, hold the line. came back and said, yeah, get the king on the line right now. Pardon? And so they got the king on the line. And Imam Shamil said, yeah, remember how you told me to hand myself in? I have a counter deal. I just took over a town. Say hello to your nieces, the princesses of Georgia, because I have them. Give me back my son if you want to see them again. This man just straight up kidnapped the princesses. He's also Bowser, so naturally the Russians were like oh, shit! and immediately made the deal. Funnily enough, the women then wrote in their own memoirs that Imam Shamil was the most manly man they had ever seen in their lives and an extreme gentleman. However, after fighting for so many years, age eventually caught up with him and he didn't want to let the people suffer for so long. Thus, he handed himself in. The Russians took him to their capital where he was personally greeted by the Tsar himself. When the Tsar made eye contact with him, Imam Shami looked him dead in the eye, and the Tsar said, She, I know we were enemies, but a real recognized real bro, and you had us good, you had us good. Tell me what you want. And so Imam Shamil, instead of living life in a prison, was put under house arrest and just lived in a mansion for a couple of years. And I don't, I don't know what he was doing for those couple of years. Writing poetry, doing push-ups, converting people, I don't know, but he was just doing things. And after a while, he decided, I want to go Hajj. So he went to one of the guards looking over him and said, hey, Yo, big man, book my tickets, I want to go to Hajj. The guard said, excuse me? Sir, you are under house arrest. To which Imam Shamil said, house arrest? Big man, I'm here because I want to be. If you want, I'll just start another rebellion. Now <laughs> shut up and book my tickets. And within a week, he was on his way to Muslim lands. Also, he just went on a side quest at one point. He just showed up in the Ottoman Empire, knocked on the Sultan's door, and just started living in the house of the Khalifa for a bit. To be fair, I wouldn't stop Imam Shamil. If he knocks on my door and says he's living here, I will simply pay him rent. Anyway, after gallivanting about in the Ottoman Empire for a bit, Imam Shamil made his way to Mecca, where he performed Hajj for the second time in his life. He then had the most legendary link up of all time, linking up with Abdul Qadir al Jazairi, who is the second most well known legend at this time who was fighting the French. As a British man, I rate anybody who is beefing the French. And nobody knows what they said, but we assume it was the most inspirational, awe inspiring speeches of all time. And then Imam Shamil made his way to Medina. 
where he visited the grave of the Prophet And now I assume that he just gave death permission to take him because he just happened to die here. And there he was buried in Baqi al-Gharqad next to the Sahaba. Yeah, this man was a walking W. They shouldn't even make a movie on him. They need to make this an anime. Can he beat Goku? Yes.